Hi, welcome to another video. So, Cursor has launched their own new model called Cursor Composer. And on the same day, Windsurf also launched their own new model called SWE 1.5. They both are supposed to be super fast models for agentic coding and are supposedly based on an open weights model, which is most probably the GLM 4.6 model. It's insane how both of these companies don't give any kind of credit to the model they've trained on, and people are somehow fine with it. I would recommend not using these models just based on that fact alone. Anyway, I digress. Let's check the model performances out and see for ourselves. The cursor model is called Composer, and they say that Composer is a frontier model that's four times faster than similarly intelligent models. The model is built for low latency agentic coding in cursor, completing most turns in under 30 seconds. Early testers found the ability to iterate quickly with the model delightful and trusted the model for multi-step coding tasks. There is no open or community accepted benchmark test, which is not a good look. Then we also get SWE 1.5 by Cognition, or Windsurf, whatever you want to call it. It apparently is faster than Cursor's model and can give you 950 tokens per second as it's powered by Cerebras. They have trained an undisclosed open model with their own RL data. Now, let's get into the testing. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered creation suite that lets you type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. Now also the best place to use Google's Nano Banana for images and VO3 for videos, plus affordable 3D model generation. Inside the image playground, Nano Banana shines for fast, high-quality image generation, and you can add reference images and do edits right in the tool. You also get Flux, Stable Diffusion, Kandinsky, and more in one place. The Video Playground supports Google VO3 with and without reference images, and you can render in different styles without the usual complexity. Great for coders who want results, not knobs. For 3D, you can upload a PNG, think a Lego build or a simple robot, and get a printable model. Cheap, quick, and surprisingly clean for rapid prototyping. Pricing is among the best for VO3 and Nano Banana, and you still have access to about 10 other handy AI tools like avatars, background removal, logo, emoji, ads, and app icons in the Creative Tool Suite. It starts at a low entry price, and you can take an additional 30% off with my coupon code KING30. Check Photogenius out through the link in the description and try it for yourself. Now, back to the video. I've tested the cursor model with the cursor CLI tool and Windsurf with the editor. You can find both models quite easily in their interfaces and use them through there. Windsurf is much faster in my testing compared to Cursor's model. Now, let's check this out. So, let's start with the Cursor model. The Cursor model's movie tracker app is not great. It has errors on some pages. The Discover view doesn't look very good. And overall, it's not a great experience. Cheaper models than this can make better code. From what it seems, this can either be a GLM 4.5, not the latest 4.6 variant, or a Quen 3 coder fine tune. I am leaning toward Quen 3 coder because it's not as good as GLM 4.5 either, but it is slightly better than Quen 3 coder. So, I guess it might be that. Now, the GoTUI calculator works pretty fine with this. It's actually pretty great and works well without any issues. The Godot game, however, doesn't work. Both Minimax and GLM are now way better at Godot nowadays. GLM 4.5 and previous open models weren't as good, so this makes sense. Similarly, the open code big task also doesn't work, and the Svelte app only has a login screen. The backend just doesn't work and has a ton of errors. The Nuxt app doesn't even run and the Tari Rust image cropper is also quite a big fail. This makes it score the 11th position on the leaderboard. It's very similar to Quen 3 Coder and GLM, 
while Kilo is still way better. And even Minimax works much better. So yeah, I mean, Cursor is like a $10 billion company that can't even make a good model. Even though there are tons of great base models out there, they can't even select a good one to train on. I don't think RL is going to help unless they get pre-training aligned correctly with the model itself. So yeah, I think it's not a good model at all. Speed should not be a concern, because tomorrow, if Cerebras or Grok adds Minimax or GLM, then you'll get better speeds anyway. And if you get trash responses at high speed, you could just use Diffusion LLM from Mercury or something. It's faster than this and can do tool calls. So yeah, this just doesn't make sense to me. If we talk about SWE 1.5, then it's even worse. It scores the 19th position, and it's pretty bad. It can't really complete anything for me. It does make a calculator, but it can't calculate, and it's kind of bad for sure. I don't really understand what these model companies are trying to do. They should either just put an open model in their product if they think Anthropic might revoke their access, or, since they're such big companies, they should just hire a proper ML team and make models from scratch. They seem very lazy and don't even know how to make anything apart from wrapping something and forking VS code. These models are just so bad. It honestly ruins my mood. I just tested Minimax, and then I see this trash. I wasn't even going to make a video on this, but many people asked me in the comments, so that's why I thought I'd talk about it. It's also insane to me how people are not criticizing both these companies for not giving credit to the open model used underneath. I mean, how is this happening? If they're basically ripping off an open model for profit and not even open sourcing it, then they should at least credit the model and disclose which one they used. This is so bad. I mean, at this point, how can you be sure that they're not just forking Klein or OpenCode or Ader and using that in their agent? It's very possible, because they just take something, fork it, rename it, and call it their own. It's insane to me how all of this is happening. I mean, it's fast, but it generates trash code. So, I think it's fast at generating trash code if that's what you care about. Just deploying an open model with a bit of RL and fine-tuning, not giving credit, and deploying it on Cerebras or Grok while calling it your own. That's not a good move. Also, the reason I used Cursor's CLI instead of Cursor's editor is because I can't see the new model there. I can only see Cheetah, and I'm on version 2.0. I reinstalled everything, but it still doesn't show up. So yeah, the CL I was showing it, and that's why I used it. And the CL I anyway uses the same agentic system. So the performance should be similar, and it's probably the only thing they've built from scratch, if they haven't just forked something and slapped their name on it. It's white labeling at its finest. That's about it. Both of them are just bad and I wouldn't recommend anyone to use them at all. Let me know what you guys think about it as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!